signs have ceased in the early times of the church. Uh, it happens around the time when the Jews rejected the reality that Jesus was the Messiah. Not all of them rejected it, but a lot of them did. And it is disputed amongst Christians and it doesn't need to be disputed. We can actually have a lot of peace regarding the subject because um, the Bible actually teaches us that these signs were for the Jewish people. Many of the people who know me might be saddened by the reality that um, I've moved my position away from what's called non-seasational to what's called seasational uh, but I would like to comfort them and say I'm still the same loving person I've always been and I'm still um, vibrantly, uh, vibrantly active for the Lord I still evangelize and um, I still thoroughly believe in the Bible and I'm still very excited about what God is doing in my life at the moment and, um, I truly believe when you call on to God, miraculous things happen. Uh, there are just things that belong to the Jews in the Bible and um, that belong to um, Christians. Uh, we are very privileged to be Christians, don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying that only Jews did miracles in the Bible, that not, uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the miracles happened for a reason and um, the Jews are part of that reason why they happened uh, in the Bible and uh, miracles still happen today but the miracles happen, uh, that happened in that time frame back when it was in the time of Acts was specifically for the purpose of fulfilling prophecy and explaining something to the Jews and having um, them understand okay this is where we are on the prophetic timeline in the Bible because in the Old Testament there's hundreds of prophecies and um, the Jews studied the Old Testament and they would recognize ah oh, that sign is for this thing the Bible was talking about so uh, a lot of the stuff um, that was happening in Acts, the Jews recognized and they understood, okay, this is what that means, that is what this means, and I'm going to show you all those scriptures. <clears throat> and um, I would like to bless you with this Bible study, because um, it truly opens a uh, person's eyes and makes life so much more beautiful, because um, God truly is working in this time frame, and I truly love the way He is working with us in this time frame. So, I think this study is going to bless you a lot, and I truly believe if you look at the scriptures, if you study it out, if you um, truly believe the Bible, then you will be very convinced. There will be no doubt in your mind the signs have se ceased. Uh, also, um, it's good to go and uh, look at the um, historical positions of what people held through church history um, and on the other side yeah, don't do that because the people through church history don't have the greatest doctrine in the world 
<clears throat> it all comes down to the Bible. It comes down to what the Bible says. The Bible is, well, is wonderful. It explains exactly what we need to believe in this time frame. It explains so many things. Oh, and it simply takes diligent study. It simply takes getting down on your seat and reading, comparing scriptures and believing what the verses say. And you will surely be, uh, be convinced um, about what the verses say. Uh, there will be no doubt in your mind. Uh, mind. No doubt at all. Um, so, uh, I want to start reading the scriptures, uh, <coughs> but for uh, reality's sake, I think it will be wise to share a uh, testimony. Uh, I've been a Pentecostalist for five years now, and um, I've seen some wild things. Uh, I'm not able to discern what was real and what wasn't real. You know, I prayed for people and they would get healed and they would jump and uh, jump around and run around. Um, I would speak in tongues and people would um, <coughs> lay out what I said. And um, yeah, this was not. But this was for five years. I thoroughly believed in the Pentecost. I prophesied um, or prophesied. Uh, and many of the stuff came true, but yeah, just because uh, it looks like a miracle, feels like a miracle, uh, just because you, in your dream somebody tells you it's a miracle, um, just because it smells like a, a miracle, just because um, it feels like a, a miracle, if it doesn't line up with scripture, it can't be right, can it? Scripture should go above our senses. Uh, senses. Scripture is higher than um, what we think. Scripture should be above all that we see. Scripture comes first. Um, and so we are very blessed that God gave us is one true standard, the Bible, so that we can know which way to go in life and not be unsure and be blessed by the reality that He gives us the direction to go, it tells us this is right, this is wrong, this is beautiful, this is ugly. <laughs> ugly. Um, the Bible is a lovely and beautiful th uh, th thing. Yeah, I love God for the fact he, uh, that He gave the Bible. Um, and I try to consume as much of it as I can. Um, and that's some good advice for any Christian everywhere. Um, so, uh, I'll tell the rest of my testimony at some other time. I have the desire to start explaining exactly what happens in Scripture with regards to the signs and why it ceases and why um, <clears throat> this opens up the whole Bible for you when you start understanding what's going on. It just explains a lot of things. Um, first we are going to Acts 7 and verse 35. Acts 7 and verse 35. It says, This Moses, whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This uh, explains a lot of the things that happened in Acts. Uh, <clears throat> this might not seem very obvious at the moment, 
but this was exactly the situation the Jews were in at that very moment. What was happening is um, Jesus was the Messiah of the Jews. He came um, and so they convinced one of his friends to um, betray him and they um, gave him to the rulers and they convinced the rulers to crucify him. Uh, Jesus died, laid in the grave, went up to heaven after appearing to the disciples telling them go and tell people that I'm alive. Um, so the Jews were going about and explaining to people the Messiah is alive and all we need to do is follow what the uh, Messiah said and then we could uh, can implement the kingdom as God promised through the Old, uh, Old Testament. If you study the Old Testament, there's no doubt about the reality that God promised Abraham some land. <laughs> um, just saying some land is um, almost uh, joking because it's the land that he promised them Israel. That piece of land was to be theirs. That's the everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham. That covenant is not going to be destroyed ever, ever, ever. Um, so, let's read this verse again. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God seem to be a ruler and a deliverer. Jesus is the ruler and deliverer. See, Stephen was explaining to the Jews at that very moment why the um, temple and the laws aren't totally bad, but why he is believing in the Messiah and that uh, they should give attention to the reality that the Messiah has come at that very moment. And so, uh, this was because there was a contention between him and some Alexandrians. It says, this Moses whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? See, uh, if you read what Stephen was saying from the beginning of his um, explanation, he was comparing Moses with Jesus. All through the New Testament, Jesus is being compared with Moses. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of similarities between Jesus and Moses. It's really something that any Christian should go and study out. It's very important. Um, so, here he says, This Moses whom they refused. So they first refused Jesus. But that same Jesus, just like that same Moses, also came back and with signs and wonders was to convince them about the reality that God was going to heed to the covenant of Abraham and give them the land again. So Jesus came back just like Moses and he was doing signs and wonders through the apostles. He wasn't there physically but he was doing the signs and wonders through the apostles. And if the Israelites would just simply follow this second Moses, like they followed the first Moses, with the signs the first Moses showed, then God would give them the land quickly. But they did not in this time. They could have, but they didn't. So Jesus couldn't come back immediately because they rejected it. So God extended this time frame for about 2,000 years and told them, I'm going to work with the Gentiles now. Now you might be thinking, 
God told the Jews he'll be working with the Gentiles now? When did that happen? Well, to see that, you have to go to Acts 28. Because what happens is gradually, everywhere in Acts, Paul goes just about everywhere in the world. And he explains to people, the Messiah has come. All you need to do is accept him, and we will be able to get our land back. But the people, everywhere Paul was going, was saying, no, we are not believing you. We don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Well, there was a lot of Jews that did accept Jesus as the Messiah, but some of them just said, no, he's not the Christ. <clears throat> Until, ultimately, the people in Rome also rejected Jesus as the <clears throat> Christ. Acts 28 and verse 24. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed, after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have been, and their eyes they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and should heal them, and I should heal them. See, the event of the Jews saying, no, Jesus is not the Christ, was actually prophesied in the Old Testament. So they missed out on this opportunity to have their Christ come back and set up the kingdom. It's sad, but it was, oh, was prophesied also. Because God knew, He understood the heart of the Jews. He understood um, how they thought and He understood um, how they see things and how they listen to the, uh, things. And in the same way, God also understands each individual person, but um, God also understood the Jews as a nation. Let's read from verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. What's interesting about this verse is that here it's speaking about the Gentiles hearing. Well, previously speaking to the Jews, they were seeing and hearing, but they did not believe and understand. Um, so, God works with the Gentiles in a slightly different way than He works with the Jews. With the Jews, He wants them to see the miracle, He wants to, them to understand the sign and then react according to the biblical prophecies. But with the Gentile, there is a message that um, you should hear. Um, God. Uh, gives a message of wisdom, uh, wisdom which is um, accept the Lord Jesus Christ because you are a sinner and you're going to hell because you have done sins and you have and you will see, uh, receive salvation um, because God is a gracious God, oh God through Jesus Christ if you accept him as he, your savior so um, that's a wisdom that the Gentile can accept and uh, it's a gospel that you can preach unto the uh, the, the 
Jew can also receive that type of gospel, but um, the Jews are used to signs because they had signs all through the Old Testament, and God um, has them as His special nation. Um, and he works in that way with them. So, um, let's read from verse 28 again. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. So, some Jews might have accepted Jesus as the Christ, but most, um, or as a nation, Israel, did not accept Jesus as the Christ, and they reasoned among themselves. And what's shocking, or uh, perple uh, will make a Christian perplexed, is that this is where the book of Acts end and when a Christian reads Acts uh, they will be thinking why is it ending, o ending over here I was still following the story of Paul and I wanted to know what was going to happen with Paul in fact we never read um, in Acts how Paul is killed we never read in fact how Paul ever sees if he sees the Caesar at all so um, you feel um, you've been waiting for that event because in your mind the story is about Paul but then the story stops. Uh, but looking at the Bible um, through the eyes of a Jew, you'll understand exactly why it stops over there. Because everywhere in Acts, the gospel of the kingdom is... Uh, explain to the people that Jesus is coming back as the Christ and that he will rule from Jerusalem and um, at every following place the Jews gradually just say no and we don't believe and go to the uh, next place see if you can have more prosperous times over there but um, they just never um, as a nation accepted Jesus as the Christ uh, and so in the end of Acts they depart and they simply have a great reasoning and they never come to the conclusion that we as a nation or uh, the Jewish rulers come to a conclusion, okay, well, together as a nation we are going to accept the Christ. Um, <clears throat> it's sad, but it doesn't happen. Um, it's what the Jews have been longing for thousands of years, even in that time frame. But uh, now God couldn't give it to them anymore. It's a very sad thing that the Jews did not accept their Christ. In the time frame the signs were showing so they could receive the kingdom as it was presented at them, uh, to them at that time frame. To understand exactly uh, what the nature of the signs would be. We are going to study the piece of scripture where Jesus explains this to the disciples. It's in Mark 16. And take careful note. Mark 16 verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, over here I would like you to note the... Um, way Jesus represents the healing. They will lie hands on the sick and they will recover. That um, is more gentle and more um, 
miraculous than um, some of the healings I've seen in Pentecostal churches. Uh, doesn't take a lot of prayer, prayer laying on the hand and immediate recovery. Um, but let's go on. I'm going to refer back to this um, piece of scripture. I'm showing you where these types of signs happen in the New Testament and in Acts and in the um, Old Testament. Uh, showing these are the nature of the Jewish signs. Um, I think we'll just continue. Uh, with um, discussing the context of this piece. It starts um, three verses earlier in verse 14 it says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief. So um, here we have the same situation that they had with Moses where Moses was rejected but now he would have been accepted. But um, of course the disciples had unbelief. Unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay. There's two key words where you should recognize over here. Jesus says, go ye into all the world, all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. So, preach the gospel everywhere. Now, this is two key concepts. Why is it a key concept? Because they were mentioned earlier. Uh, this is why it's very important to um, compare scripture with scripture when studying the Bible. Uh, it's mentioned in Matthew 24. So um, I'm going to read the three verses in the beginning of Matthew 24 to reveal the context. I'm reading from verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, this is Jesus, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and, the, and of the end of the world? So they wanted to know two things. The sign of his coming and the sign of the end of the world. Why is all this important? This is what the Jews have been waiting for, for the end of the world and the sign of his coming, the great day of the Lord um, that's been prophesied in the Old Testament. So Jesus starts explaining to the, uh, the um, because he is the Messiah, because he knows what's going to happen. Um, he says in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And there is something we need to know about the name Christ. Christ means anointed to be king and that's who Jesus was um, he was going to have a kingdom and okay, he's still going to have the kingdom and he was going to rule from Jerusalem in Israel uh, like um, it was prophesied um, ever since so what Jesus was explaining over here is um, how there would be many people trying to deceive the Jews um, about the idea that the kingdom will be established 
and this actually happened earlier um, there has come some people claiming to be the Jewish Messiah and some of them were even in the line of David uh, but they weren't the real people uh, so many terrible things first need to happen, uh, happen before uh, Jesus comes back uh, and that's a different study but I'm going to tell you a few of them uh, so we know what the context is Jesus is explaining to these three Jews um, how the Jewish Messiah, uh, Messiah is going to come and keeping this context in mind we're going to read verse 14 which relates to um, Mark 16 verse 14 says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then the end come and then shall the end come <clears throat> oh I missed something it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations and then shall the end come. Jesus is naming the gospel. He calls it the gospel of the kingdom. So, is this a gospel we know? Or is this the gospel that the Jews will finally have their dream what they have been longing for all through the Old Testament after Jesus rose from the grave and went to heaven there was a gospel of the death burial and resurrection of Christ that is called the gospel of grace Anybody who accepts Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior receives for forgiveness of sins and their account is made clean. They're washed in the blood of Christ because He already paid the price. But Christ was also the Jewish Messiah and is also going to rule from Jerusalem in the future which is awesome and <clears throat> God has worked it in a way to give the Jews a special gospel this gospel that their king is coming and um, we as Christ uh, Christians have an awesome gospel we also receive a wonderful gospel that um, a person that simply accepts Christ can go to heaven but does that mean we as Christian, uh, Christians are to um, take over the world before Jesus comes or is Jesus coming back with his saints and setting up the kingdom from Jerusalem like Hebrews uh, no it's Jude Jude that's the book that actually refers to that event um, Enoch prophesying um, way before even the flood which is frightening if we think about how awesome <laughs> that actually is yeah. So, it is a kingdom, it is a gospel of the kingdom 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Uh, we're going to keep this gospel of the kingdom in mind. It actually appears a few other times in the Bible. And let's see how the Bible describes the gospel of the kingdom. It's, it's very exciting. Uh, we're going to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23. Verse 23 in Matthew chapter 4. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness. What comes along with the gospel of the kingdom? Healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. There's some more verses referring to this. We're going to Matthew and chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with a compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Who is the shepherd of Israel? The one true Lord over all, Jesus, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, coming to reign from heaven on earth. Let's see what happens. Okay, I wrote down this verse uh, uh, without the reference, but it's verse 14. It says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay, so you can just type in your computer to see where that happens, but it reveals the reality that John had to come before Christ. John was Elijah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to explain right now in which way John was Elijah, but there was a way in which John was Elijah. And um, Jesus said, uh, the only thing you need to realize to accept me as your Messiah is simply to realize that John was Elijah. And the reason why it's significant that the moment John is in prison, uh, prison and Jesus starts preaching the kingdom gospel is because Elijah had to come before Christ. Like the um, Pharisees explained or the scribes explained. And um, so it's only natural that um, the one ministry would end and the other ministry would um, pick up. And this is what the verse is reve uh, revealing. And this is why Jesus, why the verse reveals Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Which is very cool. Uh, and to... Read the verse about Elijah coming. We're going to the Old Testament and Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Because 
the Lord is coming back and it's going to be dreadful for those who deserve the judgment. They're going to have some serious situations in that day and um, reading the Bible will convince any sober man <laughs> or sober people up. <clears throat> so let's read it again. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse so what is this curse? well uh, this is the end of the book of Malachi so the curse isn't really revealed uh, but uh, the earth was smitten with the postponement of the return of Christ. And so the earth is waiting for the revelation of Christ. And his church also waiting for the um, revelation, the restoration of the nation of Israel, which will be very exciting. So in Malachi 4 verse 6 it says, And ye shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Fathers, are your hearts turned to your children? and the heart of the children to their fathers. Children, are your hearts turned to your fathers? Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And this was the work of Elijah. And um, John did a very good work because the people regarded him such a prophet that Pharisees didn't even want to go against the people. We're going to um, think about, uh, about that because um, if this is what they were expecting, then um, they would have understood that these signs would convince them these events are going to happen now. And um, these, uh, these types of signs um, were apparent all the way up to Acts chapter 28 and to show that Paul was also a legitimate apostle. I'm going to show the signs that Paul performed and we're going to Acts 28 and verse 2. This is so that um, a person can see, okay, um, Paul was fulfilling the types of science Jesus was talking about. It says, Acts 28 verse 2, And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. Wonderful, barbarous people. They really went their way, went out of their way to help Paul and the people on the, um, from the wreckage. And it um, was a very awkward situation, but uh, they still helped the people. Uh, so they were helping these people drenched in water because they had to swim away from the wreckage. So they see this man Paul coming from the wreckage. Let's see what happens with Paul. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat 
and fastened on his hand. That's the most frightening thing anybody want, doesn't want to experience. Oh, I could just imagine what those people were thinking. <clears throat> and when the barbarians saw the ven venomous beast hang on his hand, and they said among themselves, No doubt! This man is a murderer, whom, though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Exactly what I would have said. Here's this man surviving the wreckage, and the next moment the snake eat, eats him up. <laughs> and um, you'd think Paul would fall down and die. Um, of being bitten by a snake. Let's see what happens. Verse 5. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. And that's exactly how Paul was. Never mind a snake was biting him. Just shake off the... <coughs> shake it off into the fire. Um, and I think he could have actually stopped for a moment and explained to the barbarous people, okay, th these are the signs of the apostles, um, it's things that happen, uh, you don't have to be amazed. Verse 6, albeit they looked when he should have slow, when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked for a while, and saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said he was a god. And that's something that doesn't, um, relatively speaking, happen so much these days. People don't really uh, say, Oh, you are a god. Okay, uh, maybe I should take that ba uh, back. Um, let's not refer to the Pope for people like that. Or Benny Hinn, you know. So is this um, any, in any way something you can relate to what Jesus prophesied regarding the signs that the Apostles would have shown? Mark 16 verse 17 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents. So Paul took up a serpent. Venomous beast hanging from him. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Like, well, he didn't drink it, but there, he, his body was full of poison. And poison is quite deadly, so um, I, I'd say that's quite close. So these things were prophesied, it's, it's awesome, it's wonderful. <clears throat>